Hello and welcome to episode 6 of Expert Commander. I am Christopher Armour. My name is Nick Gonzo, and I think you're very handsome. <laughs> are you talking to me, or are you talking to whoever's listening? The, 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 listener, the listener. Oh, right, okay. That's, yeah. that's, that's yeah. fine. It, hands, handsome is a, is a word that isn't used enough for women, because it, it was a word that was used to describe women as well as men. That's true, yeah. You describe someone as a very handsome lady, and it basically it sort of means... Um, I don't know actually what it means in context. Well, handsome, handsome just means striking, um, and like strikingly so. attractive. Yeah. Uh, Panic at the Disco had a song on Pretty Odd called She's a Handsome Woman, uh, and That's... there are other bands like Electric Six plays around with gender in, in, in a similar kind of way, which is sort of interesting. I was, I was actually reading an interesting article about the confusion betwixt pink and blue. Yes, go on. Um, because pink originally was a colour for boys. Because mm -hmm. it was an association between red and warfare and things like that. It was yep. a, a muted version of that. And, yeah, exactly. Um, so it was, it was uh, pink for boys and blue for girls. And that was happening as late as uh, 19, the 1920s, 1927. There was an article published uh, where some princess in Germany was meant to have a girl, but instead had a boy, and they were complaining, they were like, in the newspaper article, they were like, and I bet she had to repaint the room from being blue to being pink. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's often cited as like, oh, well, you know, the Victorians had uh, pink for a boy and blue for a girl, but it's, you're right, it, it does actually, it goes a lot further than, uh, than sort of the end mm. of the Victorian period. It was with us right up until, uh, you know, sort of um, post Post first, post first yeah, World I, War, at least. I, th I, th I heard, and I do not know if this is true, for I have not fact checked it, but I like just hammering these things out there. <laughs> uh, that it's actually the association between pink and women is because the association between pink and homosexuality as part of the Third Reich. Oh, really? Yeah, apparently uh, Jews had yellow stars, but uh, the homosexuals had pink. Triangles, I think it was. Okay, this sounds like something we and should definitely fact check, so I'll probably put an edit in here to say whether it's true or not. Okay, well, I'm going to do that now. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Friendic Googling. But I've just found the answer to um, our pink triangle fact um, authenticity. So would you like that? Then I'll talk about the dumbest thing ever. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so... Um, I found the, the pink triangle in German is Rosa Winkel was used uh, as one of the Nazi concentration camp badges used to identify male prisoners who were sent there because of their homosexuality. Every prisoner had to wear a downward pointing triangle on their jacket, the color of which was used to categorize them by quote unquote kind. Okay. Other colors, other colors signified Jewish people, two triangles superimposed yellow star, political prisoners, Jehovah Witnesses, antisocial prisoners. And the others the Nazis deemed undesirable. Yet pink and yellow triangles could be combined if a prisoner was deemed to be gay and Jewish. Right. Okay. Now there is an uplifting end to this particular bit, which is originally intended as a badge of shame. The pink triangle, often inverted from its Nazi usage, has been reclaimed as an international symbol of gay pride in the gay rights movement, and is second in popularity only to the rainbow flag. Oh, I thought you were going to say this story does have an uplifting ending because the Nazis lost. <laughs> that is also a fun fact. That is also uh, an uplifting ending. <laughs> ha ha ha. But, uh, uh, yeah, so that's uh, that's true. Yes, so please please tell me uh, about the dumbest thing ever, which you so, teased me with a second ago. Yeah, yeah, so, I, 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 so... This is pretty dumb. But you can now get Amazon buttons. Okay. So an Amazon button is a small device which you... Just put in your house that is wirelessly connected to your internet and when you've run out of it like a pro uh, product is linked to that button you press the button and amazon delivers you more oh so the whole task of shopping or and using the internet is simplified down to one button press it's one button press but it's one it's like the buttons are specific to a product so you will get a button for Jam. Toilet paper? Yeah, jam. 
dog food is one that I saw, like a specific okay. br- brand of dog food. And he's like, I've run out of dog food. I want to press the button. And rather than just wait until the Tesco delivery run brings you all of your shopping, you just <laughs> gouge a huge <laughs> detriment in your carbon footprint. <laughs> Sorry, just, uh, just just gouge a huge chunk out of your carbon footprint, and just uh, you know have him deliver that one item hand delivered to your door. Well, I does it, I but I'd imagine that it plays a siren whenever you when, whenever you hit it. You're just like, look, it's not my fault. Like the dog's hungry. I'm not going to give him human food. If if, <laughs> if you had like one for insulin because you're diabetic, <laughs> I would understand. Yeah, but that would the, that would be legit. That would be legit. But I think there's one for razor blades. Okay, so if you and, just really desperately need a shave. Well, that's the thing is that usually, like, I, it's been a long time since I shaved. I have a beard. But when I did shave, I would realize my um, razor blade was blunted immediately after I'd shaved. <laughs> so I would shave, no longer require the services of the razor blade, <laughs> bend the razor blade by more, shave later. Do you, do you see the, the pattern here? Like <laughs> Yes. It's not like halfway through, I've got half a beard. It's like, this is too blunt to use. Have no, a button, th- sit there for two hours, wait till it arrives, <laughs> commence shaving again. No, I was picturing you get to the end of your shave and you're like, oh, that was okay, but you know, that was only like a five or a six out of ten. So then you just Amazon instant order some more razor blades and then just do it again. <laughs> I, I can't come into work today with 50% of a beard. <laughs> Do it again and do it properly this time. I am not smooth enough for work. <laughs> do you think? Uh, I'm, I'm not. I'm not smooth enough for work. Is a sentence not many people can say. Sure, um, yeah. But I think that Olympic swimmers can say that. Yeah, that's a, that's a legit yeah. use of, uh, of of that phrase. I was just thinking when you were talking about Amazon buttons, and I was thinking of the um, Amazon Echo. The um, oh, the, the the dot and yeah. Yeah, the uh, voice-activated device, uh, like mm. digital butler thing. And I was just like, I feel really bad for anybody named Alexa. Well, because it's not a very uncommon name. <laughs> you, I feel bad for anyone who thinks they need it. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> that's that's, that's, like, that's going to get too mean. The, the, mo- the major focus of the advert seems to be using it to be a smug prick. <laughs> Alexa, what time is it so I can point out to my daughter who's just arrived home late that she's, despite the fact I'm sat in a dark wait for her, who's the sad one here? Um, yeah, no, I, I... That seems to be the modus operandi of, of every tech company advertising new tech. Like, the principal advantage of wearing an Apple Watch is to identify yourself as an Apple Watch wearer. Hmm. And uh, the... Amazon Echo thing seems to be seems to be much the same. I always think it's really strange when you've got these tech companies who have who are trying to introduce not just like new stuff, but really sort of new concepts and trying to get people sold on new ideas. Yeah, trying to get people to change a fundamental element of their life. Yeah, because they've got to show the product in a usage which people can relate to, otherwise they won't want it. But you know, the idea of talking to technology is something that is pretty alien I think to, to most people or it certainly was a couple of years ago so they have to like contrive all these situations where it would be appropriate to use it <laughs> yeah it's, it's like creating creating examples for something that hasn't really got a common usage yet yeah because the whole idea of adverts is to, is to put like make the audience feel like they're in this relatable situation and show them how that particular product can yeah, make it's, their situation it's, it's better like the advertising of a ready meal like in the old days before we knew what a ready meal was <laughs> it was trying to reinvent like reinvent cooking to be like don't cook do this but like what the uh, amazon echo is trying to do is like don't do the thing that you've never done before. <laughs> do this thing you've never done before. <laughs> there's no because there's no frame of reference, is there? No, there's, there's none. It's just it is a a thing you've never done before, and you should start doing it now. <laughs> and again, because there's no frame of reference, like with the Apple Watch thing as well, because there's no frame of reference, they then have to sell it on the idea of it being cool or the idea of it being a, a, a status symbol. So you get you got this product which does something which most people have no frame of reference for mm. what that means or I really have any way to gauge whether it works properly or not and then just invent like <laughs> also a, a way to make it seem cool also inventing a new idea there yeah, in that's, itself that's the thing is you've, you've not only are you trying to in, like you've invented a new object you now must invent a new way to sell it <laughs> yeah. but um, I, I gotta say that because you know 
you get, I think I got my first phone that had voice to like speech to text yes. Google searching in 2010, 2011. Mm -hmm. I, had a, I had a Google phone. I think it was the first ever Android phone. And um, it could actually be the Samsung Galaxy, like the Samsung Galaxy One or something. But anyway, I had this phone. And I, I think maybe I use it once. Sure. And then was like, no, I sound like a dick. I'm never going to do that ever again. And <laughs> now I probably use maybe like if, I, if I'm walking and can't be asked to text something, I will just use a Google like assistant to just ask it a question. Sure. And then I was, because I, I work in a city but live in a commuter town, walking around Leeds asking your phone questions, that is not a problem. Yeah, yeah. It's it's a, it's an open minded. What this is twenty seventeen, Christopher, <laughs> right? People can walk down the uh, street talking to their weak AI systems in their handheld devices, without looking like you just like a you know Starfleet member who's just landed on Caveman Planet. Sure. Because that's exactly how I felt when I used my Google Assistant on the high street of Normanton the other day. <laughs> I was walking along and I just said to my phone, I said like, um, I was like. Uh, uh, okay, Google, and I just asked it a question, and the guy looked at me like I literally just phased into existence in front of him, <laughs> like I like I beamed down from some strange planet and was about to ask him, like, t t "Can you take me to?" Okay, Google, take me to your leader. Um, Congratulations on surviving being burnt at the stake, by the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, it was. They were. The, I think the townsfolk are trying to craft a wicker man for me at the moment. <laughs> But luckily, I was managed to get an Uber to get out of there. <laughs> oh, 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 on 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 the topic of smoothness, before yes. I think you inevitably uh, move us on to a different um, topic that isn't smoothness. <laughs> I I I had I got shaved um, by a nurse today. I why I had an I had an, I had an ECG. Oh okay. Um, I had an echocardiogram because uh, I've been having a few chest pains. And uh, it's, they think it's anxiety, because most problems I have are. Yes. Um, and uh, so I had an echocardiogram to make sure I have a heart. And it says I do, but in order to prove this, they couldn't stick things to my chest because it was too hairy. <laughs> <laughs> so she's like, I may have to shave you. I'm like... It's she, not the first time a woman said that to me. Uh, <laughs> she said that in that tone of voice as well. Yeah, like, I, was, I may she, have to shave you. I was, I was lying there shirtless and socksless, which is one step closer to nudity than I usually <laughs> like to go. And, um, and she just leans over and goes, we may have to shave you. And I'm like, how much of me? <laughs> I, I don't like, I don't like the, the, the way you raised your eyebrows there. But uh, yeah, so they end up shaving my chest. And I thought they were going to shave my chest, you know, just like yeah. shave all of it. But no, 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 no. She just did a little bit of deforestation. <laughs> and now I have two oblongs of clearing in my, in my chest there, which is that's, that's efficiency the music. For you. That's efficiency yeah, for you, isn't it? Like they're not going to shave the whole thing. Like they'll just shave what they need. The NHS can't afford to shave my entire yeah. chest. <laughs> like, I'll oh, cancel all the appointments for the rest of the day. I mean, <laughs> I've been a particularly hairy man in at nine, and I need to shave the crap out of him. So yeah, I've got whenever these I'm two. whenever I'm in uh, whenever I'm in a hospital or whenever whenever I'm in somewhere and there's a giant machine that's examining me, um, <laughs> like you know, like an like an ECG or like a uh, you know, just like it's an not nice machine. to call your doctor a giant machine. <laughs> Um, he does work out quite a bit, though. True, yeah. Um, you know, like an ECG, or even even something like a one of those eye test machines that you mm. get at opticians. Um, you always have that moment where you just think, "I am so much more primitive than this thing that is examining me." And I guess you had that moment then as well, when you know it's like, "Oh, sorry, we'd love this uh, incredible marvel of technology, medical miracle, to tell you exactly what's." wrong and exactly how to fix it but first we have to like get rid of the poorly evolved hair that you as a ape wearing socks like still have all over your body you know the thing is that i would agree with you if it wasn't for the fact this thing took the entire the, the, the ecg took um 45 minutes to do sure and um 
I'd say 40 minutes of that was trying to get it to work. Oh, right. Okay. So we had to pl- we, we stuck little stickers on and then plugged it in and it didn't work. Then we moved the stickers around a little bit and then we plugged it in and it didn't work. And then we turned the bed off because we thought the electricity of the bed might be affecting it. We took sure. my... We took we moved my phone further away from me. Um, we I say we like I'm doing anything other than lying there with those <laughs> cables glued to me. <laughs> like I'm like have you tried doing this? Um, and all I kept doing was just farting out graph paper with <laughs> these black scribbles on that just make it look like I'm in the middle of cardiac arrest <laughs> right there on the table. And then and and then we 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 got some new little stickies and they didn't work. So we shaved part of my chest, and we got some new little stickies, and they didn't work. And then eventually, do you, do you, do you know what the thing was? Uh, go on. The adapter wasn't plugged in properly. Uh, see, human just, error. It just, again. it just needed a little bit of a, a wiggle, and it would have been fine. She wiggled it. It was fine. It was, she might as well just taking out the N64 cartridge and blew on it. It was that sort yeah, of thing. Yeah, it's that, kind of, that sort of... And again, it's, that's, that's human error. Like, that's... Uh, the machine uh, was perfect it was us who were the problem yeah exactly and i remember uh listening to um radio documentary about sort of post-humanism and the idea about uh you know the idea of robots and machines being more involved in especially in medical care that was what they were, mm. the topic was um and the uh, whoever was doing the interview asked a bunch of doctors if they would prefer to be examined like in their medical opinion would they prefer to be examined and diagnosed by a robot or by a doctor and the consensus was like a resounding yes for the robots to, to, to be fair the last time i gave blood they might as well have been operating on me with a sewing machine the way that it would jab it in yeah, sure, so you yeah. know it's uh, but um Okay, yeah. we segued a little bit into post-humanism there, but the first <laughs> sort of proper uh, segment of this podcast, which I'd like us to do, it's another instalment of weird shit I find at the RSPCA. We, we should have some jingle music specifically for that. Oh yeah, I'll, I'll stick some music in there, that'll be fine. Weird shit at the RSPCA, what's that you got there? Is it offensive? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the yes is just really out of tune. Is it offensive? <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's like two two keys lower as well. Okay, so it's another book, and previous installments of which I find in the RSPCA have mostly been kind of culty, um, culty religious culty. We, we, books. We've we've had some culty texts. Yeah, mostly centered around Christianity, and this one's kind of mm, the, that's culty. Uh, mm, that's culty. <laughs> um, but, <laughs> now with. 10% more cult. It's whatever Chris has got. Yeah, and uh, they're all extremely, extremely cursed objects. So this edition is slightly different. It's still culty, and it's still a book, but it's not <laughs> specifically uh, uh, Christianity. I'm holding an A4 book in my hand, which is called Paths to Prediction. And okay. this was originally published in 1974. And the edition that I'm currently holding was published in 1991. So this book is mm. as old as I am. And that's, it is... That's depressing. Your, yeah, yeah, it is your fairly standard um, run-through of um, palm reading and fortune-telling yeah. and all, all, all this sort of stuff. But the thing which I thought, okay, that's kind of interesting. That might be a candidate for which I find in the RSPCA. But the thing which took it over the line for me. By the way, none of the photos seem to have been updated since the 70s either. These are definitely not early 90s people I'm looking at. The thing which tipped it over the edge and definitely made it, I had to do it on the podcast, was that I opened the book and it out fell a handwritten note. I really, really hope that it's like got a section, because you mentioned it's got like a section on palm reading and stuff like that in astrology. Mm-hmm. If it's got a section on haruspicy, the, uh, the, the, def- the, the divination of the future by looking at the organs of in- sacrificial animals and people, right. that's when you'll get my interest. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so you have a, a piece of paper fell out? Yes, a handwritten note fell out on graph paper. Um, oh, graph paper? Somebody yes. meant business. Oh, someone meant business, yeah. Somebody, needed, somebody need, needed to keep their shit both, uh, both horizontal and vertically justified. So, <clears throat> here are... I, do, I haven't read enough of this book to tell whether these are, like... Uh, notes taken from the book or whether this is this person's own ideas um, oh, they've just are... invented bullet journaling uh, yeah <laughs> so here is uh, a, just a couple more ways of predicting the future apparently and a couple i'm going to read to you now 
Oh, this is, I'm, I am stood up for this. <laughs> <laughs> egg white. Take an egg, separate the white from the yolk, pour the white into a bowl almost brimful of water. After 24 hours, clots will have formed, which you should then be able to read. Now, the use of the word read in that sentence, I think, is a yeah, bit Is there any more? Because <laughs> I am imagining, uh, I'm imagining, like, you sort of, you know, take, take the egg white out, you, you, you put it in some water, uh, you leave it for 24 hours, you come back and it says, you're a dick. It's <laughs> in, like, large letters. <laughs> it's like, so, you, well, yeah, that is actually back, quite a strong it, message. Like, perfectly formed in Futura bold is the words... You're wasting your time with this divination <laughs> crap. You've wasted a perfectly good egg. Yeah. Also, the, the the way you said egg white there made me think that egg white would be the best name ever for a jazz musician. Egg white. Uh, I egg can, white. I can see it. Playing the with his uh, egg, egg ragtime white. band. It's egg white. Yeah, egg white mm. and the breakfast trio, something like that. Oh. Right. Uh, there is another one here which I'd like to which I'd like to um, read out to you, and also I will try this out as well for reasons that okay. will become clear. Cats, oh God! Cat's paw. If you have a cat, it too can give you a yes or no reply. Think Do I have of, to cut it off? P- pardon? Do I have to cut the the, the foot off the cat? Uh, then... No, this is a this is a, a, a relatively uh, cruelty free. Because that's um, a trick you can only do four times. <laughs> Okay. It's like the, it's like the monkey's paw. Like every time mm. you ask a question, it closes one finger. Except you're just <laughs> taking the paws off your cat. Cats get closer to the floor. <laughs> In the future, there will be fewer cats. <laughs> if you have well, a cat, be, it too can it'll give be you a yes or no. Equal number of answer. cats. Equal number of cats just increasingly stumpy. <laughs> okay. If you so, have yeah. a cat, it it too can give you a yes or no reply. Think mm. of your question. Then call your... Well, this actually says you question. I think it's supposed to be your. Think of your question, then call your pet. If the right paw appears first around the door, the answer to your question is yes. So, Nick, what's a question that you have been... Pl- a yes or no question that's been playing on your mind for quite some time? <coughs> wow. No, right. Just, I would like to point out, this is going to take some serious Columbo levels of observation to work this out. <laughs> so you've got, I've got two things playing in my head. The first one is, the old cat comes around the door like he's performing a striptease. <laughs> like, da 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 like, leg first, right leg, left leg, stick his head around, you know, or something. Yeah. Either that, you set up some form of, like, flash photography to sort of like and the winner is you know like the sort of photo finish of oh, which yeah, yeah. pork because <laughs> my my dog doesn't my sorry my cat doesn't goose step around the house <laughs> <laughs> like if i wouldn't even be i was sort of my cat sort of moves like a millipede he's just like all like <laughs> come around the door at once so um so what um <clears throat> I, I i i didn't come prepared with a yes no question to ask so uh i don't have anything i'm i'm a blank Okay, well, I will uh, uh, I will address the cat as if it is to go back to what we were talking about before, as if it is uh, an Amazon Echo. So, okay. Willow, will I die in my sleep tonight? Willow, come on, come round the door so I can read the. She's not. She's not coming. <laughs> come round the door so I can read the future. Yeah, she's she's not having any of it. So, okay. I will have if to. One, I'll have to sit on the answer to that question. What does? Can, what can you read from that? I don't know. It, 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 I feel like this. This handwritten note is assuming mm. a lot of knowledge for you know what what constitutes reading. I mean, like as we've just said, you can't really read an egg. There's also one for burning pieces of paper and. Have I have I ever mentioned the prophet hen of Leeds? No, please do. I I, I spoke about this on my blog um, quite extensively, but. Uh, the Prophet of Leeds was um, an event that was tied to uh, a lady called Mary Bateman, who was a supposed witch, but actual murderer. Okay. And the Prophet of Leeds was a hen whose eggs were predicting the future, and they were like popping out of the uh, hen with words written on them. <laughs> right. That were literally predicting the future. By, by literally predicting the future, I mean weren't. <laughs> But just even by virtue of the fact that this egg had words on, that's, you know, enough to deserve a Wikipedia article. Well, sure, I mean, words but, in um, English, I presume. Oh, it, w- words in, no, in French. 
it was a, it was a, it was a, it was a, it was a blue Bordeaux uh, hen. Hence, uh, <laughs> didn't know English. No, it was coming out in English. Um, <clears throat> yeah, and um, so it came out with one that said "Christ is coming" on it, and people were <laughs> shitting themselves that the end times are about to happen. And uh, it turned out that um, Mary Bateman, this uh, semi-con artist and uh, lunatic, was taking eggs painting on them with a little bit of acid to see what it wanted to say. Yeah. And then reinserting it back into the hen. Oh, God. But the thing that got me was that seems like just taking it one step too far. How do you mean? Like, I, like well, when was the last time you watched a hen give lay an egg? <laughs> like, like, if it just turned up in the, the, like the clutch of eggs. Are you sure? Yeah. You wouldn't go... Mm, yeah, I'm still out for the gown on this one, but not the same laid this egg or not, or not. You know. Yeah, I feel like she's really putting an awful lot of thought into what is probably the least believable part of the story. Anyway, yeah, it's, it's like it's like, how am I going to get caught? Well, if somebody doesn't see the hen lay the egg, it's like, but no one ever <laughs> is going to see the hen lay the egg. But e- either way, the um. The, the, the farmer did the only reasonable thing, which was charge entry to see it, accuse somebody of witchcraft, and then she got hung. Oh, that's capitalism in action there, isn't it? <laughs> but she actually, she, actually, she actually got hung for poisoning three men, but that's different. Oh, so it wasn't related to the chicken thing? No, 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 no. It was, it was evidence. It, it, was, it, was sort of, it was sort of a bolt-on charge. You know, oh, okay. Like murder, three counts of murder, and also witchcraft. <laughs> and also interfering with poultry. Have I ever told yeah, you about... Yeah, like, that's a crime and a half, right? Wow, yeah, yeah, yeah. Speaking of which, actually, have I ever told you about Mary Toft? No. Mar- more on the subject of favours Marys? Yeah, exactly. Um, and actually, she has more than just the, the, the name in common. Um, but uh, Mary Toft was a woman who lived uh, in sort of the early to, early to mid kind of 1700s. Hmm. And she managed to convince several doctors, including... Um, one of the Queen's physicians, that she was giving birth to a series of rabbits. I really hope you leave that long pause in there. Yeah. Um, Now, think about the process by which your Mary uh, inscribed the eggs and then reinserted them into the hen. No. Now apply that logic to what I just said. No. 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 I... I... She was. Yes. I really want to make some form of vibrator joke right now. <laughs> oh, uh, no. I just, you know, sort of insert something about a rampant rabbit. Yeah. Um. She. I uh, bet she was a few years too early for that sort of rampant uh, rabbit. There we go. There no. We go. Never, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah. yeah, and there's a, an engraving based on a painting uh, on her Wikipedia page, and rather appropriately, she's holding a rabbit in her lap, and even more appropriately, the rabbit looks frightened as all fuck. <laughs> is it, it's like a rabbit who's sus- come back from war. Is it the rabbit suspiciously moist? <laughs> <laughs> the, rab- the rabbit is like, don't, don't tell people where I've been. <laughs> yeah, so... Um, it, it, it's, the thing it's is, kind of a kind of a, a neat illustration of uh, how sort of the prudishness, I suppose, of uh, medical men and men and male society generally at the time was in mm. relation to to anything to do with wim- women's reproduction. That a transparent con like that could uh, uh, could even for a second fool anybody who was a, who was a yeah. medical practitioner. Um, the pet shop boys were like, "Hey, that looks like fun." <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I do know. I've a, I've immediately worked out a theory on why she used rabbits. Okay, because it's well, the same reason magicians use rabbits, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, because, because they're easy to make. Because you can be easy to pull them out of hats. Yeah. Um, because they just stay still. They naturally just stay very still. If uh, which is. Sounds like a lie because I've owned rabbits and they used to claw like buggery if you tried to get them back in their hutch at the end of the day. But um, yeah, no, apparently rabbits, if you, you sort of, they can stay quite still. Hence, you wouldn't, because you wouldn't want it to try and. Then again, right? If, if you were a woman, would you want to put an animal known for their outrageous burrowing into your areas? No, I would not. If I had to choose, I would not choose a burrowing creature. If, if you had to give birth to an animal, what would it be? 
Oh, God. Um, I would say... Uh, I'm just trying to think of like the the, the smoothest like <laughs> with, with, an animal that doesn't have corners is what I'm looking for. <laughs> I'm I'm thinking penguin. Uh, yeah, penguin would be a good one actually. Also, we could just slide out. Yeah, pe- well, maybe, maybe like a seal. A seal would be okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. Come to this episode being titled "I'd Give Birth to a Seal." <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, if I had to choose, if I had to choose one, animal. if I had to choose, if I had to choose. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, yeah, seals don't have many rough edges. Um, if I had to choose. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, Mary Toft and... Uh, Mary and Bateman. Wolf, Mary Bateman, exactly. Special um, corner of hell for those two people. Exactly. Proof that uh, if, you're, if you're called Mary, your likelihood to interfere with the natural kingdom is very it's much greatly increased. Massively high. Yeah, I suppose even the Virgin Mary was interfering um, yeah, with, with the natural order of things anyway, because, you know... Well, it's, it's, it's sort of people who had weird party tricks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you get, like, like the, the Mary I give, Club. I've, yes, the Mary Club, but, like, Mary, people called Mary are going to have weird party tricks. Like, uh, I'm my chicken predicts the future, I give birth to rabbits, I... Gave birth to the Son of God. All these things are pretty neat things to talk about at parties. <laughs> this is like a re- it's like a really uh, it's like a really low rent um, like circus freak show or something, isn't it? It's like, like the worst lineup the Avengers ever had. <laughs> <laughs> like no, like just as they are in their sort of seventeenth yeah. and nineteenth century selves. <laughs> that many superpowers? No, it's just, just like Red Skulls managed to get an Infinity Stone, and I'm going to give birth to a rabbit. <laughs> they just said, standing around. I'm picturing that shot from the Avengers um, when they're in the in the middle of the city, and the camera is sort of panning around, and they're all in their hero poses. I'm picturing like that, except they're all just been like all the Marys have been time traveled from uh, from their <laughs> relative time periods, and they're just standing around urinating freely because they've seen cars and like skyscrapers. <laughs> <laughs> no, this, I imagine that the, the, the Virgin Mary is like, wish my son was here. <laughs> <laughs> He'd know what to do. <laughs> it's like, well, the um, fictionalized um, flag-draped version of Jesus is, is, is kind of in this franchise, I suppose. <laughs> Are you talking about the relationship between Captain America and Jesus? Uh, yes, I am. I, I, I started off on a Superman thing, and then I was like, oh, no, actually, that's, that's DC. That's so, sorry. DC. And now a segment we like to call Nick Gonzo Mystery Shopper. But I went down a toy aisle, and on the subject of DC superhero movies, what DC superhero movie did they have toys for in a toy aisle? Uh, I am going to... We have to stop mentioning this, but I'm going to say that it's Suicide Squad. It was Suicide <laughs> Squad. They had... Um, Captain Boomerang and Deadshot, and I'm like, these are two literal murderers that you can now have your kids play with. <laughs> like, I always thought it was kind of strange when they had the um, Christopher Nolan Batman films had like had toys made out of them because sure, yeah. they were quite they were quite dark in general. But at the same time, I was sort of like, this can be explained away by the fact that Batman has a history of being an all ages property sure yeah you know like batman animated series was like a pg a u a 12 at best uh yeah i remember having the vhs tapes and they were mostly pg yeah, yeah exactly and then you got brought by batman the brave and the bold you've got uh, batman uh the two films that joel schumacher made they're very kid friendly mm-hmm. so batman's got a history of being a slightly more all ages than Suicide Squad, which is an adult comic book series. Uh, yeah, yeah. And also, you've got to remember, this is the first uh, screen adaptation of Suicide Squad as well. Yeah. So this is and the one that sets was, the precedent. Yeah, I thought it was very, very odd. But then again, there's a print shop in town that sells those, like, sort of, you know, crappy sort of canvas prints. Yeah. That you can buy that they have they have no ownership rights to any of the copyright, but for some reason they're still selling them. And they've got like they had the Avengers one. It says Avenge, and in every single one of the letters there's like a different Avenger, and you're like that's pretty cool. And then they've made one for Suicide, and it just says Suicide <laughs> in large letters. And I'm like, what the fuck are you trying to sell? Like it's a, it's a, it literally says Suicide in a good foot-high letters, and each one's got a different member of the Suicide Squad in. Oh, my God. 
could you imagine somebody looking at that and going, I want that in my kid's bedroom? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, at least put squad. Squad is a word that young people use. Yeah, squad is a word. Yeah, that doesn't have, like, you know, that has... terrible connotations. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. It's like John Waters once said, if you, if you, you know, if you go back to somebody's house and they don't have any books, don't fuck them. Yeah. I'm going to update that and saying, if you go to somebody's house and they have that <laughs> above their bed or in their living room or in the hallway, fuck it, even if it's in the bathroom, just leave. <laughs> I thought you were going to say, if you go back to their house and they have the Suicide Squad um, uh, unlicensed canvas print, perform a citizen's arrest. <laughs> that would work well, as well. I could just call the police. <laughs> let's, let's just phone up the police. <laughs> let's get out of there. <laughs> 